Hello again. Alrighty, what wildlife have you seen in Costa Rica? I've been pretty fortunate, I've seen a lot of animals. Uh, monkeys are really fun and exotic to me, and I think everyone. <laughs> Costa Rica has four types of monkeys. Spider monkey, howler monkey, white-faced capuchin, and another type of monkey. Anyway, I've seen all four of them. I've seen all of them in the wild, but I've also seen all of them in zoos and uh, rescue centers. So that's been really cool. It was kind of fool, cool, but I got to go to the beach one time and um, spent a few days there, and I was woken up once by howler monkeys, which I oh, totally embarrassed myself by making the noise kind of sound like... <laughs> it's not like a howl, it's kind of like this weird, like... I sound like I'm dying of asphyxiation. <laughs> uh, they also have a ton of hummingbirds and butterflies here, so that's really cool. I forgot the statistic, but some really large percent of all of the species of butterflies that exist in the world uh, live in Costa Rica. Uh, sloths, that's a big one. I've been able to see a few sloths um, up close, um, just kind of slothing out in a tree, doing their sloth thing, but I've also been able to see some moving around slowly, but, you know, slothily. Uh, and we have both two- and three-toed sloths here in Costa Rica, so that's cool. Not that you can really tell the difference between them, but they both exist here. Uh, I've also seen some dolphins um, out at the beach, which has been really cool. Um, I have not seen one in the wild, but I did go to a rescue center um, in this place called La Paz where they had jaguars and ocelots, which are jungle cats. I mean, obviously a uh, jaguar, but I don't know if ocelots are as well known. And they were beautiful. Really big, too. Um, and I know that they do exist in the wild here, but they're really hard to see. And so I saw one in captivity. Um, macaws, I also think, are really pretty. Uh, Google it. <laughs> they're really pretty. And I've also seen toucans. Um, I was able to have one land on my arm one time. That was a really neat experience. And then, you know, they look just like toucan sand from Fruit Loops. You know, they're big bill, and they nibble around. Um, I have seen owls, uh, which look very stereotypically owly. Um, again, I saw them in an animal rescue center, though. Wait, did they tell you? I don't think I said when I was talking about monkeys. When I went to an animal rescue center, I got to play with baby monkeys. That was a really fun experience. So, yeah, Costa Rica's had a lot of cool opportunities like that pop up here and there. Um, there's also one um, specific spot in Costa Rica. So there's the River Tarcoles, and there's a specific bridge over the River Tarcoles where it just there so happened that happens to be like where crocodiles love to hang out. Like all most of the crocodiles in Costa Rica are like in this one riverbank of the river Tarpolis. So I've crossed that bridge a few times and stopped and gotten out, and if you look down, there's just like 20-something crocodiles just chilling out there. They kind of look fake, because they're not moving, and then every once in a while one will kind of move, but... It's kind of scary, because you realize if you were to fall off that bridge, you would probably be eaten, but luckily that's never happened to me. There are also sharks in Costa Rica, but I haven't had any experience or seen any of those. There are also... Um, orca whales, and I want to say humpback whales too, that migrate up and down the Pacific coast, like all the way from Canada down to Patagonia, I think. And so they go, they cross the, the Costa Rica um, shore along the way, coast. Uh, there's a specific time to go whale watching, and I haven't been able to make it out there to see all of that, but if you're lucky, you can see whales. Uh, they also have marlin, but that's another thing that I haven't been able to see. Um, but as, as kind of a fun fact, last year, somebody found an albino marlin in Costa Rica. Like, caught an albino marlin, so that was pretty cool. As for where I live, specifically here in the mountains, we don't have any interesting animals. I think butterflies is about as exotic as you get here. And the centipedes that like to come into my room. <laughs> um, okay, how often do volcanoes erupt? Well, not often is the answer, but um, I mentioned that I actually live in front of a volcano. It's called Volcan Turrialba, the volcano, the Turrialba volcano, T-U-R-R-I-A-L-B-A. -R -R -A -A. And Turrialba 
has been dormant since the 50s or 60s, but has actually exploded, erupted, um, three prominent times since I've been since I've been here, and actually it's over the last like six months. So that does not mean that lava has spewed out. It does actually not mean that I felt an, a quake or saw anything or there was a loud pop or anything. It was just like over the course of a day, tons of smoke started piling out at the top. And if you Google search Volcan, Volcan Turrialba or Volcano Turrialba, I'm sure you're going to see some really awesome pictures of cool eruptions. Unfortunately, <laughs> I happen to be so close to the volcano at the right time when it was exploding, but I never was able to see a very cool um, like plume of smoke coming up because of just the, the cloud cover from where I am. And like right now, I can't even see the volcano, which is pretty common. Uh, on, on very nice days, it's really gorgeous, though. Um, sorry. What are nice things to see in Cervantes? Mm. On a day like this, clouds are about half of what you can see. Um, the rest are normal trees and stuff. But um, when the days are, are clear and not overcast, and you can see the mountains and stuff, the mountains are gorgeous. I'm in the Talamaca mountain range, and so you get a really nice view of like rolling mountains, and you can specifically see the Turrialba volcano. So those are that's everything that you can see from here. Uh, even though I'm in the mountains and I'm almost a mile above sea level, I can't actually see either coast from where I am. Uh, the highest point in Costa Rica and Central America is called Chiripo, and on a nice clear day from the top of Chiripo, you can't actually see both coasts. But I'm not that high up. For better or for worse. Uh, going on to question number 12, let's see if we can sprint through these last questions. What is the health system like? Are there any severe diseases? The health system is socialized here in Costa Rica, so uh, they have a lot of public hospitals and they have a public medical system uh, or insurance system through the CCSS, La Caja Costarricense de Seguro Social, which everyone pays into and everyone gets a lot out of. But it sounds a lot like the social security system in the United States, and it is in the sense that it is a, also a pension program, but it is also their, their health insurance program and Medicare and Medicaid. So that sounds really awesome, and it is really good. It provides a lot of, of great service, medical services to a lot of people. Um, but there are also private hospitals throughout Costa Rica because, generally speaking, if you can afford to go to a private hospital, you will get better service. Um, generally speaking, from talking to a few Costa Ricans about how the healthcare system works here, because like, I don't totally understand all of it, and I'm curious, so I've been asking a lot. I, throughout my time, I've asked questions about it. It sounds like... Uh, you get free health coverage, which is like astoundingly awesome because going to a hospital is going to cost you an arm and a leg, which is kind of a weird phrase to use in reference to referring to going to a hospital. Um, but it's crazy expensive in the United States. And here, it's a lot of operations can be free. However, if, um, say for example, I... Uh, have an ear infection and I'm kind of like experiencing some pretty severe pain, I can go to the hospital, let them know what's up, make an appointment, and they'll say, okay, thank you for scheduling the appointment. The doctor will see you in six months. <laughs> and you just have to wait until a doctor is available to see you. Um, I don't know how that whole waiting process works. I'm sure that for more severe things, they see you immediately and they have an emergency room um, set up like we do in the U.S. But for a lot of not immediately emergent um, emergency situations, you get put on a waiting list that's like a, a year at least. So that's the, the, the trade-off for getting free services that you also have to pay for it. Or is you have to, to wait for it. But not having to pay for medical surgeries and procedures and all that, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, are there any severe diseases? So, there are a few. Uh, dengue fever is the sort of the biggest um, 
disease that you hear about here. It is very seldom is it fatal, but it has a lot of symptoms, kind of like the flu, and it puts people out of commission for a couple weeks while they're having fevers and chills and probably diarrhea and vomiting <laughs> for a while. Uh, chikungunya is also a problem in Costa Rica. It's not very common, but there have been a lot of uh, like PSAs about it. It's really common in public buses to see a sign that says, like, how to prevent chikungunya. Uh, this is really uncommon, but if you want to gross yourself out, <laughs> you can Google search botfly. Botfly is a problem in Panama. Um, I don't think it's super common in Panama, but it does exist in Panama, and I think maybe it exists in Costa Rica too. But botfly is um, a fly that, that burrows into your skin and lays its eggs and then flies away, and then it, its egg, if you do nothing about it, grows and grows and the larva develops in your skin. I think it could be anywhere, but I think it usually happens in your back. And yeah, if you don't do anything about it, you have this full-grown big fly that like grows in your back. It's really gross. They made us watch a video about it in Peace Corps. It was about uh, someone getting a, a bot fly extracted from their skin. Oh, so gross. <laughs> um, otherwise, uh, not that this is a very pleasant conversation topic, but um, from personal experience and any given Peace Corps volunteer experience, you're gonna go. Th you're gonna have gastrointestinal problems here in Costa Rica. Um, they cook with a lot of grease and have, I guess, like lower. They don't have washing machines or dishwashers. I mean, so you don't kind of have the same level of cleanliness of plates and stuff, and so. Between the change of food that you're eating, the way it's pre prepared, all of the, the cleaning that goes in before and after, like, just things don't settle right with your stomach. So it's kind of miraculous if you don't have any uh, intestinal bowel movement problems <laughs> at any given point in time. Uh, so for an American in Costa Rica, there's that. Is the water safe to drink? In a word, yes. <laughs> You can drink the tap water here. It's fine. There are very few regions of uh, southeastern Costa Rica in the Limon province, really close to the Panamanian border, where the water is not drinkable or potable. But by and large, yes, you can drink it. There's no Montezuma's Revenge. Let's see if we can finish question number 13. What are some of the holidays that Costa Ricans celebrate? Cool. Holidays are fun. So you have Christmas here. That's universal. Um, however, Christmas is not as commercialized as it is in the United States, in a way. It, it is commercialized in the sense that Costa Ricans love to decorate for Christmas. And they don't have that buffer holiday called Thanksgiving here, because that's an American holiday. <laughs> so, and... So really, sometime in October-ish, the Christmas decorations go up. My host family literally put them up September 30th of last year. I remember that day because I was just like, it's ridiculous, it's September. But they put up Christmas decorations in September. But it's really common to, like, November 1st generally is, like, the uh, general rule of thumb when you can start decorating for Christmas in Costa Rica. So Christmas season lasts a long time. People put up a lot of decorations, and it's always kind of funny to see, like, snowmen and reindeer and Santa Claus because we're in this tropical environment where it's like 70, 80 degrees and you're like, hmm, this doesn't really sync with my traditional uh, concept of Christmas, but you know, Christmas is for everyone. Uh, but then I said it wasn't as commercial of a holiday because it's not, um, there's not as strong of a tradition of giving, exchanging presents for Christmas here. Uh, I know that my host family probably does less than the maybe the average Costa Rican family because of uh, just their income level and expendable income and stuff like that. So they just had a secret Santa exchange amongst all the family members. So everyone bought one present and gave one present and received one present, myself included. I got a beach towel. <laughs> uh, but they do exchange presents and kind of have that sort of Christmassy experience. And it is definitely a family holiday. It's common to have a big meal with the family. However, 
this was kind of weird for me. I'm used to celebrating Christmas on December 25th. Um, I think that's generally the, the American norm if you do celebrate Christmas. Uh, but here, as per, I think, more traditional uh, Catholic practices, they celebrate Christmas on the 24th, uh, on Christmas Eve. That's when you have your present exchange and your big meal with the family. And then Christmas Day is sort of just like, meh, <laughs> it's a day. I was here for Christmas 2013 with my host family. And we just went to a river to go swimming as a family that day. And I was, I went home for Christmas 2014. So I had a traditional American Christmas then. Uh, Maybe I can continue chronologically. So New Year's Eve is sort of like it is in the U.S. I feel like New Year's Eve is always like, hey, it's a reason to celebrate. Let's have a party. Let's have fun. And then you're just kind of like, oh, it's just kind of another day. Plus some sparklers. <laughs> but they do, you know, have a few small fireworks, nothing big. And we got together with my host family when I was here for New Year's Eve 2013. And... Yeah, just like have a small trago, which is like a small drink. Uh, and But there's no like specific food, no eating black eyed peas or anything like that. Or like in what, uh, different countries have different New Year's Eve traditions, but there's no one specific thing here in Costa Rica. Okay, so then we have January, February. They don't have Martin Luther King Day, which is kind of like the big holiday, I guess, in the U.S. for January. Um, and then in February, they have Valentine's Day, but they call it El Dia del Amor y la, la Amistad, or Dia del Amor y Amistad, um, which is not really celebrated here. It's more of like a thing that they do in school, um, kind of akin to like how you exchange Valentine's in elementary school. Uh, but that's pretty much all it amounts to. And... There are also random days that I can't remember thrown in between where it'll be like Children's Day or Teacher's Day or something other day, like Agricultural Worker Day, and occasionally those are national holidays, and so people, government employees don't go into work that day, but I don't remember when all those days are, and they're not anything super exciting. Um, but they're scattered throughout the year. Um, in March, uh, we have Semana Santa, which is Holy Week, which, depending on the year, could also be in April. And that's a really big deal in Costa Rica. It's sort of akin to their, it's like their spring break. They get the whole week off. And then the whole country really shuts down on Good Friday. That's like the most revered day um, in Costa Rica. And it's somewhat... Sh uh, frowned upon to like go on vacation during Semana Santa because... They say that if you go to the beach, you'll turn into a fish, which clearly doesn't happen and has never happened to anyone. But, you know, it's sort of like, you shouldn't go to the beach. You're going to turn into a fish if you go on during Holy Week. Um, where I live, I'm not sure how ubiquitous this is throughout the country, but uh, the province of Cartago is maybe somewhat more traditional in their ways. Um, they have a lot of processions uh, during Holy Week, so they sort of, they don't reenact the crucifixion, uh, Jesus' crucifixion per se, but they do... They have a march, and you know, with like people dressed up as Roman soldiers, and the guy dressed up as Jesus who carries a cross. But that's not like. I feel like sometimes people maybe actually do the whole crucifixion, but they don't do that. But they do have a a, a procession, sort of a, a stations of the cross that it goes throughout town. And as as sort of a personal aside, I'm already, I find it kind of weird that Costa Ricans don't seem to quite understand and the story of the crucifixion because uh, they dress up as Roman soldiers with the, the helmets with the flowery plume on top and, you know, the, the breastplate and everything. And they call them the judios, which means the Jews. And I'm like, I don't think you understand who Jews are or what the Roman soldiers are. Or like, who crucified who here? Um, but in, in spite of their um, perhaps uh, mislabeled nomenclature, they do... Uh, put a lot of, um, uh, I don't know, respect into reenacting the, the, or doing those processions, and they have various ones throughout the, the week, so there's that. 
So that's Semana Santa. Then in April, you also have Juan Santa Maria Day. Juan Santa Maria. I hope I don't just come off as this <laughs> jaded American who likes to berate Costa Rica, but Juan Santa Maria is kind of a funny hero in my opinion. Um, he was a Costa Rican boy of about, I think he was 19, and William Walker, who was an American who sort of, uh, in a renegade fashion, tried to claim Central America for the United States. Like, everything south of Texas to Panama, basically. And he didn't have the backing of the U.S. Army, so it's not like it was an official military uh, mission, but he did have his own army, and he did somehow make it all the way to Nicaragua. And in the southern Nicaraguan town of Rivas, there was the Battle of Rivas, in which Juan Santa Maria, a Costa Rican boy, threw sort of a Molotov cocktail into a house where American soldiers were sleeping, and he set the house on fire and killed them. And uh, not all of the American soldiers were in that one house, and Juan Santa Maria did end up dying. He was shot in that altercation. But ultimately, he killed enough people with his little bomb that, and that like defeated the Americans and they didn't invade Costa Rica. So, in spite of the fact that I think that would, in contemporary times, be called an act of terrorism, <laughs> he is a Costa Rican hero, and the airport's named after him, and he has a national holiday on April 14th, every year. And we honor Juan Santa Maria. And, uh, so that is in April. On May, in May, May 1st, we have uh, Labor Day, which is a national holiday. There's no special celebration for that day, but, um, uh, that's, <laughs> that's a holiday. Uh, April, May, June... Father's Day does uh, correspond with Father's Day in the United States. Mother's Day does not. Um, it's in August. but So June, you do have Father's Day, which is similar to Father's Day in the United States. Like, if you want to get your dad presents, get him presents. And if you don't do anything, yeah. <laughs> um, also in June and July is uh, when the Costa Rican kids have their quince dias break. Quince dias means 15 days or two weeks. Although a week would be, two weeks would be 14 days. I guess they just <laughs> like to have a little lanyap day there. And so that's their, essentially their winter break. It's not necessarily the winter season, but the Costa Rican academic year runs from February to November. And so you go, you have your first semester from February to June or thereabout, and then you have a two-week break, and then you finish, you have your second semester from July to November, or thereabout, and then you have, a, like, a two-month break, or November, December, January, three-month break, and so that's more of their summer vacation, and so this is, I mean, obviously, it's not a national holiday, but for kids, students, uh, you have your, your quince dias, your two-week summer break, and then... In August, there are two big, uh, and specifically Costa Rican holidays. One is Mother's Day, which I don't remember the specific date for. It's, it parallels with the Assumption of the Virgin Mary, which is a, a fixed date in August every year. And that is Mother's Day here, which is a really big deal. And it's sort of like Valentine's Day in the U.S., like that level of, of Hallmark takeover. Just like every store sells Mother's Day stuff. You're really encouraged to buy flowers and, you know, do something nice for your mom. And, like, they have specific announcements on the radio <laughs> and, like, TV ads. It's weird. It's a really big deal. Um, so there's Mother's Day. And then also August 2nd is um, a cool and specific Costa Rican holiday, which is the Feast of the Virgin La Virgen de los Angeles, who is the National Virgin Saint of Costa Rica. Uh... The National Basilica of Costa Rica is located in Cartago, and within the basilica is housed the small La Negrita statue, the small black girl, who is also a statue, it is a statue of the Virgin of Los Angeles, the angels. And there's a story about how a young indigenous girl found this little statue in a river, brought it to a priest and said, Priest, priest, I found, you know, uh, an apparition of the, the Virgin de los Angeles. 
or the Virgin Mary, I guess, that was found within the Los Angeles region, so it makes it the Virgin de Los Angeles. And, you know, it's a miracle. We need to honor and celebrate this moment. And the priest said, yes, indeed, this is truly a miracle. And so he put the statue away in stuff, some safe cupboard, and he was like, we're going to, you know, build a shrine, some sort of, you know, place to house this this artifact, and this is this is a miracle. Then the girl went home and the priest went to bed, and the next day he woke up and he checked his little cupboard and the statue was gone. And uh, according to the story, the little girl found it in the same place over by the river rink where she found it the day before. And she returned it to the priest and she said, I found the statue again because he said it was missing and I went looking for it and here it is. It's a miracle. And that same routine happened a couple times. And eventually they said, this place where you found the statue is the holy ground and we need to build the church there. So they built uh, the church around that area. And then it got destroyed by an earthquake twice. <laughs> and then they decided to build it somewhere else. And I don't remember the significance of the new place. But now there's the new basilica housing the La Negrita statue, which is the, the virgin of the angels, La Virgen de los Angeles. So to honor that uh, uh, that Marian apparition, apparition of the Virgin Mary, uh, there is an annual pilgrimage to the Basilica de los Angeles on August second every year. It's called the Romeria, which I guess would just translate to pilgrimage. And so people walk from their house to the Basilica, or um, in my case, I've done it twice. I went to San Jose and then I walked to the Basilica. It's something like. 17, 16 miles, I think, or kilometers. I don't know. It's a full day's walk, though. It takes, like, maybe seven hours. And it's a fun social event. It's, like, I'm not particularly religious, but I still think it's a cool um, experience, and I really enjoy doing that both times. And so those are the two, Mother's Day and the Romeria, are the two holidays that we have in August. September. Get ready for Costa Rican pride, because we have... Costa Rican Independence Day on September 17th, right? Yes. Yeah, December 17th. And, man, this country likes... is, is a very, Costa Ricans are very proud of, of Costa Rica. And so throughout the month of September, you're going to see tons of Costa Rican flags. A lot of the uh, Escudo de Costa Rica, which is the shield or emblem of Costa Rica. Uh, it is sort of a, a shield, I and mean, it has seven stars that represent the seven provinces. And it has a, a sea with a boat on it, like an ocean, a boat on it, and some mountains to kind of represent like the coasts and the mountains of Costa Rica. And yeah, people go all out. And there's a whole Semana Civica in, in the schools. So that kind of means that their week is dominated by these sort of like patriotic pep rallies. Um, on holidays like Juan Santa Maria Day and Mother's Day, and then there's a Columbus Day in October, and then some other days, they have actos civicos, actos civicos. It's just like a pep rally, but instead of supporting your sports team, you're just like supporting Costa Rica. <laughs> so they sing the national anthem, they sing the, the anthem to the flag of Costa Rica, they sing their school song, they have the principal come give some little lecture about this and that, they give some like dances or presentations that have to do with whatever the topic du jour is. And... Yeah, it's just this, it's, yeah, I don't know how else to describe it besides, you know, what I just said, and it's sort of like a, a national pep rally. And those, like, dominate Samana Civica, which is a, a week in September, and you just, like, go to these things day after day after day after day. And just kind of, it's, it's a lot of, like, reminiscing on the history of Costa Rica, praising Costa Rica for its accomplishments, talking about Costa Rican heroes, and all of that. And so, so yeah, when you think of September, think of Costa Rican Pride, because that's when they have their Independence Day. And obviously they don't celebrate the 4th of July, because that's American Independence Day, and this is not America. Um, <clears throat> and then September, October. Uh, they have what was previously called Columbus Day, what is currently called El Dia de las Culturas, Culture Day. Uh, Columbus, uh, so supposedly, uh, I mean, he did, discover Costa Rica, he, or he was the first Westerner to arrive in Costa Rica. And so if you can see here, I have, this is Costa Rican money, it's colorful, 
This is 1,000 colones. So 1,000 colones, that's plural, but if you have one, you have one colon, and colon is Columbus in Spanish. So uh, Cristobal Colon is Christopher Columbus. And since he uh, discovered Costa Rica, the currency is named after him, and they have a national holiday, Columbus Day. Um, here's another bill. Uh, this is 10,000 colones, 10,000 colones. On the back side, we have a sloth. And uh, the conversion rate is about 500 colones to the dollar, so this is worth about $20. And prices are pretty similar here in Costa Rica. Um, as an interesting fact about Costa Rica, the man on this bill, Jose Figueres, yeah, I got it right, is, uh, is the man who, he actually instigated a coup d'etat in the 40s. He's the one who ousted the then president and he got rid of the military and he created a new democratic state and got rid of the military. And usually coup d'etats mean like a dictator takes over and your country kind of goes down the drain, but in this case, they had a coup d'etat, and it resulted in 70 plus years of stable democracy. So, yeah, came out and worked out well. Oh man, this is a really long video. I'm sorry for eating up so much of your time. I mean, you could have watched, like, a whole episode of House of Cards in this <laughs> this time. Um, but I hope you at least kind of uh, gained some insight into Costa Rica from me ranting on. And, um... So this, that's the end of all the questions that you left me, and I hope that I, sorry, I hope that I touched on everything that you were interested in, but um, believe you me, there's more stuff that I can talk about, and I'm sure you can maybe, I'm sure more questions arose from some of the things that I said, uh, and feel free to write me back, and if this video, um, answer, this, using videos to answer your questions is a good way to to facilitate this uh, sort of exchange, um, let me know. Or if you have any other recommendations, please let me know. Um, in true Peace Corps fashion, I'm very open to feedback and any sort of constructive criticism. And again, like I said, if uh, you have any more questions, feel free to let me know. I kind of enjoyed this. <laughs> I like talking. So um, just let me know if there's anything else you want to know, and I'd be happy to help you out. Hope everything is going really well in New Jersey. Um, I've never actually been there, and so if, if you all would like to get together to make a video to send me, I'd be, I would love to, to get that from, from your class. Uh, and yeah, all that being said, take care and yeah, have, have a good Spanish class. Hasta luego.